This video is a short introduction uh, to complex numbers. So where most of us probably encountered complex numbers for the first time in our lives was when you had to solve this quadratic equation, x squared equals negative one. And what we learned, you know, back in high school or middle school, who knows? But anyway, we learned that that has no real solutions. Now that's not historically like where complex numbers were first encountered, but I think it's a common uh, starting point for a lot of us. So one solution though from that would be, well, if I take the square root of both sides, you know, I want it to be the square root of negative one. That's not a real number, but uh, what should we do? We'll just treat that as some symbol and we're gonna denote that symbol, square root of negative one by i. And so again, our definition here is we're making a new symbol, i, and it's defined as the square root of negative one. Now notice that this i has an interesting property. You know, when you square both sides of uh, our little definition here, uh, you see that i squared gives you back negative 1. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to extend the real numbers, which are usually denoted by this boldface r down here. We're going to extend it by creating the set of all expressions of the form a plus ib, or if you put bi, that's okay too. Uh, so anyway, it's a plus ib, where a and b are real numbers. And by extend, what do I mean? I mean that all of these expressions here, you know, real numbers have that form too, right? Where b is equal to zero, and that's what I'm getting at down here. So by extend the real numbers, I just mean that well, any real number can be written as a plus ib, where b is equal to zero. Now what we're going to do is call this set the set of complex numbers. And so the notation for it is this boldface C. And just to kind of put it all together one more time, I've created a bigger set of numbers, which is again, is all expressions of the form A plus BI, where A and B are two real numbers here. And so just in case it's not crystal clear, you know, there's no other simplification I can do here because, you know, they aren't like terms is a good way to think about it. Now it's typical to denote complex numbers as a Z. So you've taken college algebra, you're used to using X's and Y's to graph things. And so uh, in these videos, when you, see a, when you see a Z, you can take for granted that that's gonna be a complex number. Now, if Z is a complex number, then there should exist, what does that mean? If I think about the definition, all right, these are what complex numbers look like. So there should exist two real numbers, X and Y. So I'm using X and Y instead of A and B, such that though, Z is equal to X plus I, Y. So a complex number consists of two real numbers. And what I'm gonna think about these two things as, I'm gonna think about those as sort of like the components of the complex numbers. So if you're kind of thinking complex numbers sound like vectors, you're on the right track. That's, that's a way to think about them. But uh, let's go ahead and name these components it's x and y. So we're going to call x the real part of the complex number z. So it's the part that doesn't have an i. So that's the real part. And we're going to call y the imaginary part of the complex number z. Here's some notation. If z is x plus i y, then to quickly talk about the real part and the imaginary part, we're going to use this kind of function notation. re of z is x and im of z is y. So we can think about these two things as functions. And if you're thinking about it the right way, these are two functions that have a complex input z, but then they give you a real output, either x or y. And uh, why that's cool is that they're actually possible to graph. And so in some Later videos, we'll, uh, we'll look at the graphs of the real part of a complex number and the imaginary part, or of, um, of, of, of some more complicated inputs here. Now, this suggests the following way to try to visualize the complex numbers. We can just think about it as a plane. And so we'll take the real part as being the horizontal axis, you know, because that's x, of course, that's consistent with what I've learned up to this point in my life. And I'll take uh, the imaginary part to be the y-axis, the vertical axis in this case. And so when I want to talk about a complex number, a plus bi, I'm just thinking about, I'm going to go over a units on the real axis, and I'm going to go up b units on the imaginary axis. So I can visualize a plus bi as being that point right there in the plane. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this the complex plane. Another word for that that you might encounter depending on what book that you're using is the argand plane. By the way, maybe it's worthwhile to say some good books that, uh, that I've encountered um, that teach complex variables and complex analysis. For this intro stuff that these videos are based off of, um, Beck has a, an online textbook that's free, that's great. Uh, another good one is uh, Wunsch. And then of course, Brown and Churchill is pretty classic in that case too. And a much harder one, um, but again, is very thorough is uh, Alfers. All right, so what's the connection? So back to this picture here. So that looks an awful lot like the regular plane that I've you know, graphed stuff like y equals x squared in my whole life. So what's the connection between the plane R2 that I know and love from college algebra to the complex plane up here? 
And the connection is, oh, I just relabeled the elements. Instead of thinking about a point x comma y in R2, I'm gonna think about it as the complex number x plus i, y, and c. Now when I'm doing this, you're probably like, oh, wait, what is like the square root of negative one, and i squared is negative one, blah, 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 where does that come in? I'm just talking about sets right now. So I'm not talking about doing any algebraic operations on these sets. So, so far, just in terms of R2 and the complex numbers, how are they related to each other as sets? It's just a matter of relabeling. And so, of course, uh, a more formal way to describe the two sets are the same up to relabeling is to say that there's a bijection between the two. So there's a bijection from the uh, plane R2 to the complex numbers. And one possible bijection would just be to take the point x comma y and send it to its corresponding complex numbers x plus i y. So remember, bijection means that it's one to one and on to. So what we're going to do in uh, the series of videos that follow, uh, we're going to explore two questions in the immediate upcoming videos anyway. And so the first question is, how do the algebraic operations of plus and times from the real numbers, in other words, how do the ways that I add and multiply real numbers, how does that inform me of a way to do similar operations to complex numbers? And the second thing that we'll spend some time thinking about is how does the way that I measure distances in the plane between two points, you know, my Euclidean distance function, can I use that in some way to talk about how far apart two complex numbers are?